What's up guys, welcome to another Scratch tutorial. Now if you're here, you probably have been all your life wondering how 3D works and how to break it down simply. Because the problem understood is half solved, right? So today, I actually don't want to be showing you how to make really anything. Well, that will be a byproduct. I'm really here just to explain how 3D works. And this is going to be a part of a series I call Understanding 3D. <laughs> Now, first what you need to understand is how axes work. For example, the x-axis. If you go along the x-axis, you have 100x, so that's a coordinate. This right here is x100, y0. If you go up, this is 100, 100. This is 0, 100. If you took a geometry class, it should be easy to understand how the plane works and how you categorize it. So let's make a new sprite, call it renderer, and let's create a costume that's just a black dot. As you can see, if we make a block called render and run screen without refresh, if we go, so if we just do it, change x by 10, and do pen down and clear when it first starts change X by 10 change Y by 10 change X by negative 10 and change Y by negative 10 let's do it like 50 so you can see it a lot better as you can see it's now making a square and if we forever do this if we make this a lot bigger as you can see if we move it around it's just rendering based off the axis so this is how basically computer programs make 2D sprite, as you can see. Now we have to understand the z-axis. Now the z-axis is kind of hard to understand, but think of about it like this. Think about a bunch of layers on a book, okay? Basically, the further away it is, the smaller it seems and the smaller value it is. As you can see, if you were imagining this is 3D space, this would be z0 this would be z10 this would be z20 basically what the z axis is depth into 3d space now basically what we want to do is add a new block make it go to and we are going to do x y and then z now what this will allow us to do is go to a certain point on the map and render that so now what you are going to do is make a variable, call it camera x position, and then name one camera y position. Now what you can do is, it's simple. Now what we are going to do is go to negative 20, 20, then we are going to go to 20, then negative 20, then negative 20. And then we are just going to replace them with these blocks, so negative 20, 20, 20, negative, negative 20, then negative 20. And if we go to X and Y, it's basically the same thing, so it's working the same. But now what we are going to do is do plus Y plus camera X position and camera Y position. So now if we make these adjustable variables, it moves based on the position of the camera. We're going to set pen size to 5, just to make it simpler for us to see what's going on. We are actually just going to get rid of this block render and just put it right in there. Then we are going to do pen up. We're just going to readjust it until it makes a square. Now it's working perfectly. So hopefully I explained that well enough so you understand how we're going to do the Z. Now what we are going to do is make a variable call it camera Z position it's the same now how do we make this it's a good question it's actually pretty simple basically the more the z position is then the more smaller it will get so first what we need to do is make a variable called fov fill the view and basically what you will do is x plus camera x position plus z plus camera z position and you are going to divide those two. Basically, you're dividing by the Z. So the further it is, then the more you're going to divide by it. Then you are going to do view factor, fill the view. You are going to do that times that. And that's just so the value is good. 
Now let's just duplicate it on the Y. So we're just going to duplicate this whole thing. And instead of X plus camera X position, we're going to do Y plus camera Y position. Now we are going to reset all these to zero because it's bothering my OCD. And as you can see, if we move, we now have a 3D object that can move in 3D space. And the closer it is to us, the faster it moves based on its X position. And the further away it is, the less it moves. Congratulations! You just made a fully working 3D engine. Like, no joke. It's a little hard to grasp your mind around, but that is literally it. I'm just going to really quick plot all the necessary 3D points for it to make a cube. Now what I'm going to do is set ghost effect to 100 so that ugly black dot we don't have to see anymore. As you can see, if we go, we can scale it up move it around, shift its perspective, and this is exactly what we want. Fully working 3D engine, and it's super simple. It's just this algorithm. The further back, the sh less things move. But yeah, that was part one, how to make a 3D engine. I hope you guys are excited, because, I mean, when, when I, I still remember when I first learned this a long time ago it made me super excited because you think it'd be like all complicated because you look into other people's projects you're like wow that's how they did that oh no i don't want to do that but it's actually way easier than you think so yeah make sure you guys like this video make sure you share it with your friends if it helped spread the love and i'll see you guys in the next scratch tutorial peace